It's just frustrating. It is so frustrating. I I hate to say this, but I have been I've gotten fed up with Christian films. I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm sorry, guys. This movie has broken me. Wow. I was really angry back then. You know, it's 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 funny what a difference just a few years can make in someone's life. God's had me on quite the journey since then, and I like to think that I've come a long way. <sighs> you know, honestly, looking back at that, I, I'm just in, I'm embarrassed. I am so embarrassed about how it ended. I, I hate to leave something that was such a huge part of my life for so long, end on such a negative note. So, I suppose one more season won't kill anyone. So, I have been out of the loop for a while now when it comes to Christian movies. But when I decided to bring the show back, I asked fans online for suggestions of movies to check out. One of the most mentioned was The Case for Christ, which came out in 2017. Based on the best-selling book by Lee Strobel, the movie dramatizes Lee's journey as a skeptical atheist setting out to disprove his wife's newfound faith in Christ. He interviews several experts in different fields. Uh, such as doctors, historians, archaeologists, and psychologists, determined to find out if the evidence agrees with his belief that the resurrection of Jesus was a lie. Now, unfortunately, I haven't actually read the book, so I can't speak as to how faithful an adaptation it is. However, I did find a quote from the real Lee Strobel talking about the movie. He said, quote, I'd say 80-85% of the film comes right out of our lives. In fact, there are some scenes that we get emotional about because this is ripped from our lives. This is like a transcript. Now, when it comes to emotional moments, this movie's got plenty. In fact, right out of the gate, we're thrown into a moment that is terrifying for any parent. While at a restaurant with his wife, Leslie, and daughter, Allison, Allison chokes on a gumball. She's moments from death when a nurse who's eating there with her husband steps in and saves the girl just in time. The nurse, named Alfie, tells Leslie that her being there was God's providence intervening. Well, it's not luck. It's Jesus. My husband and I went our way to another restaurant tonight. Something told me I need to be here. And because of her conversations with Alfie over the following weeks, Leslie eventually becomes a Christian. Lee's reaction to the news of her conversion is, well, less than positive. Uh, okay, yes. this is not us, Leslie. Whatever this is... Okay, it is not us. Can you, you are listen on your to me own. and not get I mad? I am listening to you, and that's the problem. And as the story progresses, we see the roller coaster that their marriage becomes. Lee's whole motivation for his investigation is to disprove Christianity so he can win his wife back from this Jesus cult. Now, through the film, there's also another story that Lee is pursuing. He is, after all, an award-winning investigative reporter for the Chicago Tribune, and he's working on a story about a cop shooting. His investigations in this story parallel and actually assist him with honing his investigations into Christianity. Now, generally, I've always tried to avoid spoilers with my reviews because I don't want to spoil things for the audience. I really want to encourage people to go see the movies I'm talking about, for the most part. <laughs> but the problem with based on true story films is we generally know the ending going in. It was based on a true story. Everybody knew the Titanic sank. I bet Phil Albert really happened, right? Yeah! Uh, Earth to wall captain, Ben Affleck is not a real fighter pilot. So obviously, Lee does become a Christian in the end. The evidence and arguments that he encounters in his journey leave him no alternative but to accept the reality of Jesus, his resurrection, and how important it is to accept the salvation that he offers. So, after watching The Case for Christ, I find myself about to say something that I haven't said about a Christian film in a long time. I really enjoyed this movie. Yes, it's made by Pure Flix, and I admit their films and I have had a uh, rocky relationship in the past, but after watching this movie, my respect for the studio has gone up. 
again, not having read the book beforehand, and yes, I know it's a classic, I should have read it beforehand, I was able to go into this movie and judge it on its own merit. The fact that they could take not just one, but many academic arguments and condense it and make it into a, a natural conversation is really impressive. Granted, it's a film. It's a fictionalized recreation of actual events. So, of course, skeptics are going to go in trying to nitpick every little aspect, whether it's maybe the cinematography or the acting or whatever. But if you actually go into this with an open mind, you could find some interesting starting points for your own investigations. Now, I thought the acting was great, especially from Mike Vogel and Erica Christensen, who played Lee and Leslie Strobel. The heavy, extreme emotions that those roles demanded are no easy feat to pull off. And I thought they were phenomenal. The cinematography was pretty good. You know, maybe not like blockbuster worthy or anything, but it, for a low budget indie film, yeah, no, it was good. Uh, the production design did really sell the whole 1980 look. At least for this guy who isn't old enough to remember the early 80s. <laughs> Overall, this is yet another example of a Christian film whose focus is more on telling that personal drama over having, you know, perfect cinematic artistry. Some may say it's very preachy, especially considering all the many scholarly dissertations we get throughout it. But it really is a story about how those arguments changed the life of one man, which in turn created a multi-generational legacy. Overall, I really enjoyed The Case for Christ, and I highly recommend it. In fact, you uh, could say that this film has helped a uh, jaded skeptic of Christian cinema uh, realize that maybe the genre is not as hopeless as I thought it was. In fact, it's actually made me want to start doing some research of my own into the history of Christian films and, and see how we've gotten to where we are today so I can better appreciate how far it's come. I just gotta figure out where to start looking. <laughs> actually, I've done the research for you, Storyteller. I found these little gems called the Gospel Films Archive. Thank you so much for watching and a huge thank you to my awesome supporters on Patreon, who, by the way, have already received access to the entire 10th season of Indie Christian Review. If you would like to support my future projects, please visit my Patreon page by clicking the link here in the video or in the description below.